Thanks for tuning in and welcome back. This is part two of the uh, engine repair job we're doing here on this uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee 4.7 V8. So uh, at this particular point in the repair process, I like to show you what I typically do. Um, still gathering information uh, on what the uh, best result for the customer is going to be. So um, I did a little bit of block preparation and I'm about to check these heads out right now. Kind of get a general idea of the valve train condition, whether there's cracks, is it warped, should we machine it or should we just avoid that process, just get new heads or what. So there's still more information that need to be gathered before we make our final decision. So let's take a look at these heads. All right, so here we are at the cylinder head. Uh, just got finished taking all the spark plugs out. And um, what I think I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna check the uh, warpage limit on it. Although overheating wasn't an issue, so I still wanna gather as much info as I can. Uh, since we had a problem with, um, you know, valves seating correctly, I'm going to check the valve seats first before I check warpage limit or before I check for uh, anything else because if the valves aren't seating correctly, we can stop there and uh, figure out whether or not we want to have it machined or if we want to get new heads. So let's take the cam off. I elected to do it this way. So we could get more of a, uh, a accurate understanding of whether or not the valves are seating because if the cam's off, there should be no uh, cams uh, forcing any of the valves and open. So if we remove this, every valve should, should be closed 100%. All right, here we go. caps are numbered so you can't really mix them up if you are doing this job if you are doing this job I'll list some uh, some torque specs and uh, engine specs I'll put it in the uh, description on um, on reassembly but right now let's uh, figure out what we need to do so if you're doing this job, the right cylinder head, the very rear bearing cap is five with an arrow pointing towards the cam sprocket. And it's going to be five, four, three, two, one. Just in case you're doing that with the arrow pointing that way. All right, so let's get this cam out. Set the cam right here on this wood top. And of course, let's get these rocker arms off. So I'm not too worried about the order in which these come off. They're sort of like roller style. So there's really no wear in really no need for them to wear together because it's it rolls all right let's get the lifters out besides I likely probably not going to reuse this head anyway but I may need these lifters may need those rockers. All right, so let's flip it upside down and uh, check whether or not these valves are seating right. So let me go get some compressed air and I'll show you how I check them. 
Okay. So let's see if I can get camera to zoom in there a bit on the valve. All right, so let's take a look at, let's see, let's take a look at this first. Remember, the cam is out, so uh, the valve should be 100% closed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of uh, compressed air. And um, blow it into the port. But first, let's... Get some soapy water, we'll shake it up. Suds are our friend in this situation. We'll spray some, some soapy water in there and we'll blow into the port. Same thing on this guy. We'll move on to the next one. Okay. And let's give this a little bit of air. This one not sealing either. It's a little bit better than the other one, but still, still not seated. Let's check this one. like we do have one valve that's seated. Let's, let me make sure I'm getting this. All right, shoot it again. Some soapy water in there. Hit it with some air. So as you can see, this intake valve is seated correctly. This one doesn't have a problem, but we got leakage rest of them no leakage from that one okay so I'm really not gonna waste my time and check the exhaust valves because we got three uh, intake valves that's uh, leaking here so there's really no point in uh, wasting my time on checking the uh, exhaust valves we know what we need to know already uh, this thing needs a valve job okay so uh, the next step would be is to check prices on getting valve job done okay and one thing to keep in mind too is on that other cylinder head um, the valve seats fell out. So we know that if none of these valves are seating correctly, likely uh, these valve seats are probably on their way out as well. So um, it may be a good idea to uh, just get some new cylinder heads all together. So anyway, let me call my machinist, get some prices and uh, see what our next step is going to be. I'll pull, put the other head on here and uh, there's really no reason to check out the other head but if you're just tuning in and haven't watched part one 
I'll show you the reason why we removed these heads to begin with. So this is the uh, left side cylinder head. And you can see what happened here. The valve seat fell out of it. Um, like I showed on part one, which you guys pretty much know already. But just in case you're just tuning in, this is the reason why uh, the cylinder head was removed to begin with. We did a leak down test and had um, a significant amount of compression escaping through the intake valve and back out through the throttle body. So that was enough for to authorize the teardown uh, to figure out what's going on. So that's pretty much where we are, uh, is gathering information to determine whether or not this engine should be scrapped, is a head job sufficient, does it need new heads, should it be machined, should we just buy a used replacement engine? So that's what we're in the process of figuring out. Okay, so at this point, we need to move on to the block and see what we got going at the block to continue our uh, information gathering. All right, moving on to the cylinder block. Uh, first, let me show that uh, we got the engine compartment completely cleaned off. We pressure, wa we pressure washed it. Every little jug and container is clean. All the components in here have been cleaned off. So we got the engine compartment nice and pressure washed off. Obviously, I covered the engine block completely so it doesn't get wet. And after that, we moved on to, uh, well, actually, we got the block cleaned up first. We knew that the block was in good shape and that this uh, engine repair job um, is definitely just top end issues and no bottom end issues. So, uh, so we went ahead and took the liberty of pressure washing it out for them making it look nice and clean. Uh, just a nice little professional touch to throw on uh, on, a, on a major job like this. So we checked uh, the block for straightness. Got my machinist ruler up there. So you can see that. And um, so we got, uh, the block is straight. Didn't have an overheating problem anyway. So well, we, of course you wanna double check it if you're in this deep. Both sides, we got the pistons cleaned off, the cylinder walls cleaned out. Uh, we got inside the timing cover uh, cleaned out best we can. Got the um, gasket sealing surfaces cleaned off. This is a cast iron block with a sheet metal gasket, so it's pretty easy to get this surface cleaned up. There's no composite material left behind or nothing. Plus, it's a cast iron, so it's pretty tough. So. I just took a brass um, wire brush, put, uh, put it on the, um, my DeWalt and just ran it and knocked off any little RTV that was on um, around the timing cover and little coolant ports and uh, stuff like that. So we got it nice and cleaned up. If you notice this liquid back here, I got some transmission fluid back there. This cylinder is at the lowest point, bottom dead center. This one is also on bottom dead center here uh, while this piston is on TDC. And so what I did was each day I would move uh, the crankshaft to a different position to have at least two cylinders on bottom dead center. And I filled them all up with transmission fluid and came back in the next day to see if they would all leak out to try to get an idea of the piston rings. And you can see these cylinders are still full and they've been, this fluid's been sitting in here since uh, yesterday at five o'clock. And this is the last uh, cylinders. So we know they all checked out good. None of them leaked the fluid out. So likely the rings are in uh, decent condition. Is this the best way to check? Obviously not, but it does give you uh, uh, an idea. If this one, if this cylinder would have leaked all the fluid out, and this one held it, well, then that may change my mind on which way we go with this particular repair. So, uh, of course, it's uh, just giving me uh, some direction here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that um, transmission fluid out of these cylinders, 
and then I'll rotate the motor for you and show you everything uh, uh, rotates nice and smooth there's no bent rods or anything like that if you got a bent connecting rod uh, the engine or the crankshaft will not rotate smoothly with all the tight clearances that you deal with in the bottom end a bent rod will make it extremely difficult uh, to go up and down on whichever cylinder has a bent rod so we'll rotate it and make sure that nothing's going on below this point too all right so let's just rotate this by hand I'm just using a 22 millimeter wrench a ratcheting wrench to uh, rotate the crankshaft notice the pistons move nice and freely no issues here whatsoever no binding minimal effort used to turn it it turns pretty normal so we know we're not dealing with bent rods or anything like that uh, we, don't, we don't have any oil pressure problems it wasn't a blown head gasket issue uh, let's see what else not dealing with yeah, any any binding issues on the lower end or anything like that so we know that this engine is top end problems only so why uh, buy a brand new or excuse me why get a used engine or you don't know uh, the story behind it because we all know uh, a junkyards are not going to give you the accurate mileage on a used engine they're going to tell you it's got 70,000 80,000 miles on it what have you but uh, common sense will tell you this is a 2002 there's no way um, there's a 2002 with 80,000 miles on it uh, likely that's probably a lie so um, I think it's better to do this work versus buying a used engine that could already be on its way to dropping valves say we do put it in there and it runs great but the customer only gets three months out of it before the valves fall out of it which brings me to this point these engines you can't you either have to rebuild them or you have to fix the valve seats that fall out of them you can't put a used one in there because they're ticking time bombs you never know when the valve seats is going to fall out of them. They always fall out somewhere around 100,000 miles. If you get past that, that's great. But typically, the valve seats fall out about 100,000 miles. So this way, you know, with a good bottom end like we got here, we'll get a good top end on it. We can guarantee this customer that he'll have a good running engine um, without having to worry about will valves, valve seats fall out of some junkyard engine we just put in here so that's why we chose to go this route versus um, just getting a junkyard so engine. the machine shop wanted basically 700 bucks to uh, do the uh, valve job on it and to uh, reseat the or put new valve seats in them uh, what they call bulletproof in the, the valve seats whatever little process they use to keep them from falling out which I know most machine shops out there do have their little um, tactics that they use to keep the valve seat from falling in and um, so I was able to find some new cylinder heads from uh, a, a, a company out of Texas called Cylinder Heads International and this is probably about the fourth head that I've gotten from Cylinder Heads International and I've never had a problem with their heads. You can also find them at www.headsonly.com. And so we got some new heads. Let me throw them up here and we'll unbox them together. All right, let's see what we got. like they come pretty well packaged, a lot of styrofoam, that's all that's a plug.
chose to go with a new cylinder head here. Well, it's a rebuilt head. But um, I got this from uh, Cylinder Heads International. Uh, I've always gotten good heads from them. They've never given me anything bad. Uh, looks like a pretty good head. I mean, your basic machine work done to it. Uh, looks like a pretty good head. Let me give you the information. Uh, like I said, it's probably like my fourth cylinder head that I've gotten from this company. And it's a lot cheaper than um, what my machinist was going to charge me. My machinist wanted 350 per head, and um, I'm not a mathematician, but I believe that's 700 bucks. And I got the pair of these for five after shipping, like 590, I believe. So a little under 600 bucks. So obviously I went that route. So. Uh, you can see too that these heads here, let me take you in here and show you. You could, you could tell that these heads had the same problem and was repaired. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, look at the, just above the uh, intake valve. You can see right in here where it had an issue at one point, even on the exhaust valve, with seats falling out of them. So, uh, they all have this issue. Um, likely if you get a rebuilt head, it's probably gonna be like this. But anyway, so this is the route we chose to go. Some new heads, I'll unbox that other head and closely inspect it and then, uh, I'll also show you uh, some of the parts that have already come in. We still got a couple more parts to come in, but I'm gonna show you uh, really quick some of the parts that we got so far. So let's go take a look. All right, so here we are on the bench. I've cleaned up. See, I got the timing cover cleaned up here. <clears throat> got the surfaces all cleaned up. Uh, thermostat housing, water pump housing. It's got a few little nicks in there. May have to uh, put a little thin coat of silicone over this. Uh, got the uh, exhaust manifolds cleaned up. The surface is cleaned up, ready for uh, the new gaskets to go on. Got the uh, intake manifold washed off and cleaned off. Uh, cleaned out the inside with some degreaser. Rinsed it all out. It's been drying for a few days pressure washed off the valve covers so we got that nice and clean got some parts coming in here we got some genuine Mopar uh, hydraulic fan fluid yes it takes fan fluid uh, it is a hydraulic fan this here I believe is uh, the intake gasket so we got some uh, little uh, rubber intake gaskets here these are our head bolts. One, one box. Uh, and then uh, got a valve cover gasket here. I decided to go with a, a genuine Mopar uh, head gasket. I'm still waiting for one more head gasket to come in. Uh, we got... Uh, this is a throttle body gasket. So we'll replace the, the throttle body gasket as well. Got a timing cover gasket here. Get the timing cover back on. Got some exhaust manifold gaskets, which I thought was pretty cool on this uh, particular Victor reason. They use uh, sheet metal on one side and then composite on the other. So that's pretty cool. And then, uh, Let's see, what are these? I'm not sure what these are. So let's open it up. You see, I got some, some spark plugs, some champion plugs. Just got your basic copper plugs. Um, I usually use, oh, okay, yeah, these are head bolts as well. There's some, um, 
some uh, also so a smaller size head bolts to replace along with the larger head bolts. So these are head bolts as well. I got a seal here. This is for the uh, the timing cover, front crank seal. About these plugs again, I usually use copper plugs. It depends on access to the plugs. If it's obviously difficult to get to the plug, if it's a bank that's behind an intake, I'll use iridium or something like that. But uh, copper plugs always perform the best. Nothing conducts electricity better than copper. So I'll always go with copper plugs unless it's, it's smarter to do a different material or the manufacturer specifically recommends you use a certain material, then I'll do it. But other than that, I go with copper. And then uh, this is a genuine Mopar thermostat. Only use genuine thermostats. I've had terrible success using aftermarket thermostats. And got a Gates water pump. So as far as parts, I believe uh, this is pretty much it to get this thing back together. I am waiting for one more head gasket to come in and uh, we can start getting this thing back together. So uh, stay tuned for part three as we start to reassemble. This is Brian916. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. Well, hold on YouTube, before I let you go, can someone please tell me what this blue stuff is around the valves? and on a combustion chamber. Uh, as you can see, I hit it with a little bit of brake clean and the stuff runs right off. I'd like to know, what exactly is this stuff? So if anyone knows what this blue stuff is on a combustion chamber, please leave a comment below. I'd like to know. Thank you.